I'm Brock Romanek, the driving force behind Zippy Point. Today, Kevin LaCroix joins us to talk about Dino Insurance, an area for which he is known as the man. That's not only because he's been in the field for almost 40 years wearing all sorts of different hats, but because he's been diligently blogging about the topic for nearly 15 years on the DNO Diary, a truly tremendous blog. But Kevin does have a day job. He's the guy you hire to help negotiate your coverage with the DNO insurance carrier. He's a lawyer. The DNO insurance stuff is legalese intensive, trust me. And he serves as executive vice president for RT ProExec, a division of RT Specialty. RT ProExec is an insurance intermediary focused exclusively on management liability issues. By the way, if you're new to Dino Insurance, make sure you check out the right side of Kevin's blog. You'll see some nuts and bolts about Dino Insurance today on Zippy Point. So Kevin, why should a company not forego its side B coverage, try to reduce its costs? Well, the side B coverage is going to be the coverage that responds to most claims. Side B coverage reimburses the company in the event it is indemnifying its directors and officers. Most claims are going to fall on side B of the policy. Side C is the securities claim coverage for the entity itself. Side A is the coverage that's available if the company is unable to indemnify either due to insolvency or legal prohibition. But in most cases, uh, where there are claims against directors and officers, the policy coverage that's going to respond is the side B coverage. Um, so most claims against most public companies, the defense costs are paid by side B and any settlement amounts are paid by side B. That means that if you have bought a policy that doesn't have side B coverage in the event of a serious DNO claim, you will have to fund the defense out of the company's own assets and you'll have to fund the settlement out of the company's own assets, which means that the side B coverage is providing significant and material balance sheet protection for the, the company. Um, it also provides uh, cash flow um, protection. Um, it, it's a problem for a company to have to pay defense fees that might run in the neighborhood of hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a month uh, that could significantly affect cash flow of many businesses. And then the uh, requirement to fund a settlement, uh, obviously, um, you know, would be a huge cash event for most publicly traded companies. Um, whereas if they have simply paid their insurance premiums on an annual basis, there's no um, disruption to cash flow. There's no uh, ca potential for cash crises. So it's a way to manage both the balance sheet vulnerability that our litigation, litigation system creates. And it's also a way to manage uh, cash flow needs of the company. So, um, you know, most companies are going to buy the side B protection. Where you will see companies buying side A only towers um, are either the large financial services companies that simply tell themselves that, well, you know, we, we feel better about our balance sheet than the insurance companies. So all we're really doing is buying catastrophe protection for our, uh, our directors. Um, you'll also see it for some uh, large high-tech buyers simply because their cost of buying a full program is so, can be so significant that um, the, the cost alone um, persuades them to try uh, some alternative structure. Um, it's actually a conversation we're having more these days because in the hard market, the cost of insurance for many buyers has gone up so significantly, they say, okay, I need another idea. Tell me, tell me what else I can do because I can't, can't afford uh, you know, the, the bill that's being presented to us. So um, alternative structures, um, you know, it is uh, definitely part of the conversation, but for most buyers, it's not gonna be a prudent choice to um, forego the side B insurance. It's not a conversation you're gonna have with any corporate executive that's been through a serious DNO claim, um, they, they understand the, what they're buying, what they're paying for, and the value. Um, you're more typically having that conversation with a buyer that hasn't been through the fire before. Or they're in an industry, as I said, like financial services or high tech, where it's such a completely different uh, financial picture that it, it forces a conversation about alternative approaches. Yeah, sounds good.
Thanks very much, Kevin. And my pleasure, Brock.